Good morning, everyone. Uh, Jody's here, and I just wanted to take a brief moment to talk about to have or not to have gastric bypass surgery. And I have to say that if you had asked me this five years ago, I would have told you you were crazy. Even though I was obese, I would have told you you were crazy. If you asked me this seven years ago, even though I was obese, I would have told you I didn't need it. Uh, three years ago, I was in denial. Um, I don't know what brought me to it, but once I made that determination that I needed to save my life, I went full force and never looked back. I can't say this surgery is for everyone. I can't say weight loss surgery, period, is for everyone. I would have to say you really need to have hit your own rock bottom. We've all done the weight loss diets, the diet pills, the gym, the personal trainers, um, you know, the B12 injections, every fad diet under the sun. I think we've all been there. Um, you have to hit your own rock bottom to know that surgery is your answer. And you need to come into this fully educated in all regards and to anyone considering weight loss surgery don't watch the commercials on TV or see the ads on the internet and just assume that gastric bypass and lap band are your only options there are a lot of options out there um, that another surgery may suit you better and each surgery really is different and would suit different people and different needs. You know, for me personally, I'm a binge eater. I need restriction. I also have a sweet tooth. I needed something that I needed to be afraid of getting sick. I also needed the malabsorption. For me, it was hands down, ruin why gastric bypass. That was my answer. The duodenal switch in theory sounds great. They get to eat, you know, whatever they want or that's what I read about, um, you know, that's their claim to fame that they can eat as much or whatever they want. Um, and you know, uh, they don't, most of them are negative toward the ruin why in regards to dumping and, and you know, the side effects that we get, um, which kind of makes me laugh because what they put down is the exact reasons why I chose the ruin why. So as you can see, it's totally an individual choice. Um, if I wasn't a binge eater, I totally would have gone for the duodenal switch. I would love to sit there and eat chocolate cake and cheesesteaks and pizza, you know, and just malabsorb all of it. But that, for me personally, not going to happen. Um, but the biggest thing that I just wanted to say is the commitment that you have to make to this surgery is lifelong. You have got to be willing to truly work this tool. I don't care what surgery you have. Again, there's people out there who have other surgeries who say, you know, work the tool. That's not why they had surgery. They didn't want to have to work. Well, you know what? Anything in life that's worthwhile, you have to work for it. I'm sorry. Nothing gets handed to you, you know? So you do have to follow the rules and there are recommendations set forth by your surgeon and, you know, your medical group that handles your surgery, there's a reason they set forth those rules. They want you to be successful. And you've got to be willing to take your vitamins and take your supplements, and I have to do it three times a day. I have alarms set on my cell phone that three times a day my alarms go off. And actually, it's five separate times a day I have to take vitamins and supplements. Because I can't take my multivitamin with iron at the same time I take my calcium. So, you know, there's one set of pills at 7 a.m., one set of pills at 8 a.m., one set of pills at lunchtime, one set of pills at 5, and another set of pills, you know, anytime after 6. That's five times a day. That's a big commitment. It's a pain in the neck, but guess what? I don't want to die. I don't want to harm my internal organs, and that's what's going to happen. You know, you can get away for a couple months without taking it, but when you go in for that blood work, you're you're cooked. <laughs> your your primary care physician is going to, you know, rip you a new one because 
your levels are gonna be completely out of whack. There's one girl who says she actually hurt her heart muscle by not taking her vitamins and it's permanent damage. And you know, and she brags how she's 99 pounds and this and that and guess what? I think she looks like crap. I think she looks anorexic. I think she is anorexic, not just looks it. I think she definitely has an eating disorder. Uh, but she's in denial about that. And if you say that word anorexia to her, she flips out. So whatever, you know, she's in her own demise at this point. I don't think, I don't think there's anything anybody can do because there's a bunch of, uh, of uh, good for nothings on that website that encourage her behavior. And if you gave half a crap about her, you would jack her up, back her up against the wall and slap some sense into her. But she doesn't want to hear it. And people coddle her and allow her to continue to behave that way and make her feel like she's okay and normal and she's not but neither here nor there you know there there are those out there that that lose weight very unhealthy after surgery excuse me it's morning and I just needed my coffee um, there's a lot of people that, you know, during what's called the typical honeymoon period, you know, which can be anywhere from six to 10 months right after surgery, that's your biggest weight loss period. Um, they, they starve themselves. They'll do four to 500 calories a day and think that that's going to make them lose weight. Guess what? I'm nine weeks out. I can do anywhere from a thousand to 1200 calories a day. And I exercise probably about four days a week and I've lost 43 pounds. So what does that tell you? Everybody is different. I eat 1,000 to 1,200 calories a day because every time in my life that I've dieted and I've gone into restriction mode and I drop a large amount of weight relatively quickly, the minute I go into the maintenance phase and I begin to eat normal, I immediately put the weight back on because my metabolism grew accustomed to living off 500 calories a day. So if I try to go a maintenance phase and try to start eating like a normal person, my body now is going to store all those extra calories. So I'm not going to follow what majority of the people on this website um, for weight loss surgery patients do. I'm not going to do under a thousand a day. If I do, it's by accident. It's because I got busy at work or I, you know, was out shopping or at the beach or, you know, just got caught up on a weekend and, you know, you get off routine, you know, when you don't have your little food journal with you and you can't live by a clock, it's easy to get off routine, but it's never my choice. I don't consciously think to eat under a thousand calories. Um, as far as exercise concern, I have the same theory. I don't want to go gung ho at the gym and do an hour a day, seven days a week right now, because when my honeymoon period is over and I really have to work for every pound I lose, um, you know, I'm, I'm doing what I have to do now, but this really isn't hard work. You know, it's just a commitment to a different eating lifestyle. But when I really have to bust my butt to get these pounds off, just like every other woman in the world, I want to be able to increase my exercise to get the effect. I don't want my body used to doing an hour a day, seven days a week. It's my same theory with food. So this is, <clears throat> excuse me, a, a, a big commitment. I would not tread into this lightly um, if I were you. I would think long and hard about the right surgery for you and make sure <clears throat> that whatever lifestyle you have, whether you're a wife, a mother, a daughter, a sister, an aunt, um, a, a career woman um, or man, um, but I generally tend to speak to the women out there who I can connect with, um, you have to make sure that whatever your life calls for at this moment in time that the surgery will fit with it because this surgery has to be a priority in your life it is not something you put on the back burner this is number one and it's for the rest of your life so i wish you all luck and i hope you find the right surgery that works for you